What's up guys, we're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. I'm not Chasing Cinema. Jacob Toronto. I'm not Jacob Toronto. Mr. Toronto. I'm, what, the, what are you? I'm the beast. Ah, just kidding, I am Chasing Cinema. This is Mr. James Shu. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> we are here for M. Night Shyamalan's potential return to the big times in he's Glass. He's on the height, he's, he's growing. Glass, the, the uh, sequel third the sequel. Third chapter in the-, the trilogy. In the Unbreakable Trilogy, planned. the Glass Trilogy, that was all in the works. Always, um, always. We walked, okay, so I always forget, because we talk about it a lot, but Unbreakable, you saw it, you didn't like it, you didn't like it, you never uh, seen yeah, it. Yeah, no, I like yeah, it Yeah, me a too. Lot. Huge fan of Unbreakable, like, I remember growing up when I started collecting, you know, Six Sense, everyone was on. Signs, I didn't connect with as much as most people. Aliens, I dug like, it, Mel Gibson. But I was like, why is no one talking about Unbreakable? Like, I was a fan of that, right? It was something different, it was really unique. You got Bruce, you know how much I love Bruce. Um, I, was, I was a fan. And then, you know, all the other movies <laughs> kind of came. We went through the really bad streak. And then we got Split, and me and you both really enjoyed Split, right? I you was loved... sitting next to you in Split, and I was watching it. And I was just like, okay, this is good. Okay, I like him. And then out of nowhere, <laughs> the final 10 seconds, it like blew my mind. I was yes. like, what? Yeah. And I remember, I was like, wait, this is the sequel. This is So in order to talk about Glass, though, we are going to have to spoil Split and Unbreakable. So if you haven't seen those and you're watching this, you need to go watch those two before we even talk about the basis of Glass. But then you kind of have to ask yourself, why are you even watching the video? <laughs> you never know, man. You never know. Um, so now we fast forward, I guess only three weeks later. Yeah. From the ending of Split. And we are now going to bring back all the elements together. We're going to bring back Bruce Willis. We're going to bring back, what do they call The Overseer? Which they didn't call him back in the day, but they, yeah. I don't think they named him, but The Overseer. We have Mr. Glass himself, mm. Sam Jackson. Mm. And then we have James McAvoy, the, uh, the, uh, the, beast the Beast slash The Horde. So... Uh, going into this, you know, M. Night Shyamalan got a lot of big love for Split. He's getting confident. He tells everyone this is all part of my big plan. Like like a typical guy who like ends every movie with a twist. He's like, no, this is a twist. I got it. This is all a trick. Uh, I'm sure this whole movie is like an actual twist. And there's going to be like a whole thing. Just kidding. Um, now we have the culmination of everything in, in the sense the Avengers, the, the, his version of the Avengers uh, with this movie. And what did you think? Well, I came in pumped up, yeah. fired up, motivated, and passionate. But then all the previews and stuff ca came out, and we talked about this uh, off camera that I don't great. know. I don't know. For some reason, it just lost so much momentum with me. Yeah. And then I felt that the color palette that they were picking Looked horrible. Uh, this, uh, which pink, is only really apparent in one scene. But they made the whole marketing around this <laughs> yeah, pink around that scene. Yes, which is uh, the psychiatric ward. And so uh, we're yeah. So as the moment as this movie is coming on board with us, the momentum was slowing down. Yeah, the trailer. And I really lost a lot of interest, but because it's so it was like split. I had me all all pumped up. And fired then they up, announced glass. And then I was like, okay, let's yes. go. And then I don't know what happened. It just kept on dropping. Uh, but now it all erases. And well, right before, and then the reviews came out. Oh yeah, it and came out like, wrong. Yeah, it came out wrong. So I was like, oh crap. <laughs> You know, and if you read the the reviews like I did, and, or watch videos on the reviews, yeah. a lot of them were just saying that um, the movie just goes. <laughs> you know, so it's like, but that don't mean nothing to me. Yeah, that doesn't I, there's, mean anything there's to too you. many movies that this are wrong. This guy liked that, Hunter yeah, Killer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's too many movies that are wrong that I enjoy. So what that, was the one that you liked with the teen girl? The one last year? Uh, or two Midnight years ago? Sun. Oh, uh, no. Before I Fall. Before I Fall. <laughs> number two. Number, <laughs> number three two on your list. Of the year. Yeah, I think Ooh, it was like a 31%, year. but that's all right. And that's okay. Yeah, man. Different um, tastes. Yeah, so, and then another good thing, too, is when I go into movies with no expectations, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? So I have uh, good news to tell everybody. That, uh, nah, no, no way, <laughs> good dog. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, it, was, it was okay. No, the movie was okay. But it was, no, nah, it wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good, but it was okay. Yeah. It, it was okay. But there's a lot of talking. You could just tell how bad he wanted to like it. I really wanted to like it. <laughs> yeah. A lot of commentary. So if you're that type of person that don't like, like, uh... uh the slow build. The slow, yeah, burn, yeah. slow burn, would you yeah. call it or no? Yeah, slow. I mean, to me, I don't think it was as slow as everyone was saying. Like, I was... You know, I mean, people throw that term around quite often. Like, some people use slow, like, if not every... There's not an action beat every ten pages. You know, like, that's slow. But, I mean, this movie is not an action movie. This is a very... But I thought, I think... This is, you, like, a, a thriller. But that do you think that people movie. are expecting it to be action? I don't know. But, I mean, that's, like, I didn't... Con that's why, like, I wouldn't necessarily consider this slow. Like, I thought this was... Oh, okay. For what they were trying to do with the this movie, I mean, that the pace fit. 
right? Like the whole movie is about them being in a mental hospital and them finding it. Like if they're really crazy and there's a plan being cre hatched and all that stuff. It's all planning. It's all, you know. So I wasn't it's expecting this like big plan. explosions of stuff or like a major action scene. But I could see where people got disinterested, you know. I think sometimes people confuse the word slow and like kind of just disinterest. You know, they'll say like, oh, I was disinterested because it was slow. No, you're probably think it's slow because you're just disinterested. You're not invested in the material. And I don't know. You, uh, you, so, yeah, so I'm yeah. watching it. <laughs> Uh, I was, I guess, just interested, whatever. Just <laughs> the first 20 minutes or so, yeah. I really liked. Yeah. You know, I like the fact that his we son. We get the reintroduction. Yeah. yeah, I like that. You know, it's like he's helping his father, uh, Alfred and he's Bruce his, Lane. He's his oracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. You know, uh, just not as hot as uh, uh, Barbara Gordon. Yeah. You know, so I dig it. I, I enjoyed that. It was all good. And then we have McAvoy, Kinem, cheerleaders. You know, that, that what, was what else can you expect the man to do? Yeah. yeah. And then they had this first showdown. And then they lock him up in a psychiatric ward, and there's the rest of the movie. Yeah, they're like and then in this Mr. Glass. Yeah, so I was like, I think I don't know. I'm not M Night, <laughs> but it's like I wish they wouldn't even have the psychiatric sort of part. If, honestly, I wish they would have fought. He got away, and then it's the rest of the movie is just them trying to find chasing each other him. or something and chasing him, huh? you know. And I don't know, just the the movie. And then my problem too is it's M Night Shyamalan, so I'm ex I want. Because he's known for a twist ending, so it's like, all right, give it to me, dude. Yeah. You, you got everything going right now. You, the momentum's in your core. This movie's supposed to up with uh, $50 million, I believe, this yeah. week. You know, uh, he personally financed the $5 million to make this movie. Yeah. So he's, he's like all in, so I'm like, okay, he's going to he's gonna do like just slap you with something at the end of this movie. And I'm just, I was st I'm still waiting. I'm, like, <laughs> you know, I'm still waiting for this ultimate ending where I'm just like, yes! Really quick, to kind of a little bit off topic, but do you think... The Sixth Sense was like the biggest curse in his world. Yeah, probably. Like, cause he probably was like, I'm sure he didn't start off as a writer. Like, I want to make twists my thing. Yeah. And like now he just has the unfortunate forced, like, fact that he always has to make a twist in order to please any audience that goes see his movie. When you see his name, you expect a twist. And I kind of feel for him because he got hot off Sixth Sense. And then every movie studio wanted him, and every movie studio sort of wanted him to give him a Sixth Sense. Oh, give us that big shocker at the ending. And then he's stuck having to write like that the rest of his career. I think he definitely could have broken away, especially when he's like self-financing and all that stuff, but that's who he became. And, like, I think Forbes called him the next Steven Spielberg. Get out of here. I think you gotta Google it. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that, but he's definitely not the next Yeah, Steven. actually, can you uh, <laughs> he's definitely M. Night, the no. next Steven Spielberg? Tell me who said that. It, but it's someone reputable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, but uh, that's not, I, I, I don't, you know. No, that's the curse of yeah. what happened to him. It's like, it's like. <laughs> well, yeah, but. Did Steven, you know in Sixth Sense that, that ending? Yeah. Before it happened? Well, I watched it much later, so like, I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't oh, spoiled, you. but I was I was a bit older, like I didn't uh, watch it when it came out, but yeah, I had a feeling. I remember when I watched it, I was like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back uh, yeah, to Glass. Yeah, back to Glass. So yeah, so I'm watching the movie, and uh, yeah, I, honestly, I was let down. I'm still going to give it a 5 out of 10, because I didn't hate the movie or anything yeah. like that. It's just that um, Split was better. Yeah. You know, and th for this to be the sequel to Split, which it is. Was Unbreakable better? Uh, yeah, probably. Probably, you know, and that's, I, I think maybe I'm just wrong for feeling this way, but I don't believe him that he yeah. ultimately had that. According to an interview he recently did, he said, M. Night Shyamalan, and we talked about this last week. the writing director, he said that uh, he, the, Split the character. Beast yeah. was always supposed to show up in Unbreakable, always was supposed to. I don't believe that. Yeah. Now, and I heard or read a headline, and I didn't read it, so don't quote me, but I believe Sarah Paulson's character has a place in Unbreakable too. Oh, is that what like they as say? well, yeah. That's what I had heard that she was in, or her name was mentioned. Uh, the character, in, the character, okay. of course. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and Unbreakable. I don't know how true that is, or, and I don't. I mean, to be honest, I really don't care because you mean, could have just named her that because her name was in the movie, you know. Because yeah. this movie feels like they gave him a year to write a sequel to both Unbreakable and Split, and he had to just pull everything he could out of his behind. Yeah, that's what it feels like because we're constantly like, just running this, 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 this. Uh, this gamble with him, and it never feels like there's a big plan. Like, you know, um, part of the movie is like, oh, there's always a master plan. It never feels like there was a master plan to begin with. Like, I just see him getting up like, okay, okay, we'll do that. You know, like just struggling every day to just pump out this script that he's been claiming has been in his mind since Unbreakable. Um, anything else you want to go on to? Uh, probably, no, not too much. Just, I think I just, I'll probably get something from you, but I think the end of it, I'm, I was, I'm just disappointed. Yeah. There's no, we'll do a little spoiler talk. There's no ultimate ending that I was hoping. And, yeah. 
um, to jump on what you were saying about he had a year. It's not that he had a year, I don't think, because he self-financed this, and I think he knew he had to. I think it was more of living up the people hype. were telling him, bro, you're back, you're back. Yeah. Knock this out of the park, get this done in a year, and you will be the man again. That's such a and problem. unfortunately, I just feel like, do you know the story about Lady in the Water? No. So oh, maybe not. Uh, maybe Lady I do. in the Water was originally supposed to be produced by Disney. And they, they read the script and they said, hey, you gotta change that ending. And he, uh, you, uh, go, you can Google this too, Dallas. He <laughs> left the meeting and said no. And literally left the meeting and that's why I left Disney and I went yeah. to whoever. <laughs> and then, you know, and then, <laughs> I like how you visualized it. <laughs> like jumped in the pool. Anyway, continue. So I think what's interesting though, out of just talking with you, is the movie that you wanted to see isn't the movie I wanted to see. And that's where the big divide is. So the first half of this movie does take place in the psychiatric ward, and it's all about the the, uh, the Sarah Paulson's character kind of injuring them and trying to convince them that they aren't really superhuman. And the second half of the movie, when when hell breaks loose and and the unstoppable force meets the immovable object, is when I tuned out. So I think the movie that you wanted to see, where we have Bruce Willis chasing the Horde and the Beast, I don't think I want it. I think the one unique thing going into this movie is that it wasn't a superhero, but also played in that world. So there was this kind of, where is this realm of reality drawn? But like once we just kind of let loose, it feels like, like I was during the, this big climactic fight scene, if that's what you want to call it. Um, I was just kind of like, yeah, now I feel like we're just watching another, you know, superhero major action movie like it lost all of its uniqueness to me i didn't feel any superhero yeah. uniqueness yeah well no but i like the idea that these three random guys <clears throat> um either contemplating or are really supernatural in this world of normal people and the idea that we're kind of trying to learn about them there is like some interest and uniqueness there when we are kind of uh you know just literally stuffed with superhero stuff. It is this kind of interesting way to look at the world and a different way to look at superheroes and I dug that, but once they kind of uh, have this big climactic scene, it just kind of loses all of its hype. For me, I liked when they were in the psychiatric ward. I didn't love it. I mean, I think I was intrigued enough, but it's, I still, you obviously noticed me checking my watch a few times. Three times, well, dog. Well, I was, cause I was wondering, I was like, well, how are we gonna wrap all this up? You know, like in what time frame are we gonna wrap everything up? And obviously we get this big climactic fight scene, which we'll talk a little bit more about in spoilers, and which is like one of the most, un and it just, it like totally loses steam. You know, it really like, it builds you and you're kind of like, okay, and then when the, the, the one thing that everyone wants to happen happens, it's just underwhelming. And then it goes off into a semi-twist, and then there's the, the big reveal, and you know, then there's like, oh no, and then there's a, a, the, the M. Night Shyamalan twist, just when you thought you were looking this way, you know, like we, early on in the movie, talk about the magician and that and in uh, misdirection we want you looking here but you're really looking you know and, and it's just there's nothing no content to really feed off of um to be honest the whole movie i was kind of thinking about this is m night Shyamalan's way of criticizing superhero movies and and just how they are and kind of like that you you make a superhero movie and they just keep popping up like this feels like m night Shyamalan's commentary of how it feels about marvel and dc movies that they're just running the game and someone needs to be damage control and manage all of this stuff That's what honestly I kept thinking about during the movie, but uh overall I think it was meh I, I, the movie didn't do anything for me I don't think it intrigued me as much as split even though uh, You know M Knight was d and that's another thing too like, you know M Knight was running out of material because there's at least 10 minutes of this movie just watching James McAvoy transform multiple, mul you know, multiple times. Not that I hated that. I mean, James McAvoy yeah, that was nice. is so good. And like, I mean, obviously in Split, it's far better because you have a lot more time with the characters. Here, they're like changing like this. So the subtleties aren't there that make that performance that great. But it became a one trick pony after a while. Like, okay, he's just changing his accent. And, you know, he's a new character. We kept introducing more and more and more and more. Uh, it just feels like it's running. It doesn't have enough material to fill it. It just feels like we got here and now I don't know what to do. That's what it really does feel like to me. So disappointing. Um, I, the question of where this goes now, uh, I'm sure this movie will make money. I don't know. Um, it's supposed to open at 50, cost yeah. five, marketing, let's just say yeah. 10. 15. I don't know where to go from here. And um, to be honest, I'm not really interested. So spoiler talk. Let's, let's get into the spoiler stuff. I guess there's not much to spoil. So the whole plan, of course, is a mess plan by uh, Elijah Glass, Mr. Glass himself. 
And uh, the big reveals, you know, so we have the idea that Sarah Paulson is this doctor who wants Everyone to... knew she was the master <laughs> art of this. Yeah, like, she, you know she's fishing. I didn't know it was a crime organization that had a three-leaf clover. I didn't know that, but I, everyone... Damage control? Yeah, there's not one They just part. fill up restaurants, I guess. They, yeah, they... what the hell? <laughs> what is that? There, I think it was kind yeah, of like, exactly. the, like the Illuminati feel, like they're all around you. Mm. But it was kind of weird mm. to be like... We're always gonna just pose in restaurants, and then once it, like you know, we're just gonna pause. Like, well, why even own a restaurant? Just sit in like a warehouse, like a normal like bad secret evil group, you know? Like the whole restaurant <laughs> thing just doesn't make sense physically, or not not physically as in like tough, but but I mean money wise, like monetization wise, that's just not smart, you know? Like why open a restaurant, pay all that rent, pay for everything, and then like just pay, keep putting. Anyway, um, I was surprised they all died. <laughs> yeah, was... no, honestly, uh, pretty ballsy. I, I, but I also think probably the worst decision, you know, because now I think if anyone does want a sequel, like you have major issues for killing off those characters. Yeah, because now so, you're going to give us a sequel with the new with or, new people. Or well, well, we have we have Ava, we have a, we have Ava, we have Ava Taylor Joy, we have Mr. Glass's mom, and then I can't remember Bruce Willis's son's name. Uh, the act, the, well, the actor. So we have those three to continue the story, and I don't know what. Wait, wait, what do you mean? So those are the three characters that will lead us into the next film. Oh. That's why. Oh. Because what does Mr. Glass say when they come out? The main characters. Oh. Yeah, so. I know, it's not too intriguing, oh. is it? See? Again, I'm like <laughs> let down by all these, uh, I think so, like, yeah, Spencer see? Clark. Yeah, Spencer Clark. Um, so okay, so the big so the big idea like I dug like I dug Mr. Glass. I thought he I thought he was so cool and unbreakable, and I loved him in I this. I loved him in Like him just kind of breaking it, eh, you know. I loved him playing with the guards and stuff like that. It was a bit more generic. Like we've seen that kind of. I'm gonna play catatonic, but I'm really not. But Sam Jackson is still man managing to be entertaining enough that even when he's playing at something kind of generic, he's good. Bruce Willis. You know, it's hard not to like Bruce, you know? And, and James McAvoy, you get those few moments and you're like, damn, I remember why I love Split. Like, this guy is so good at what he does. Uh, and then His Sarah... traps were huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, he was buff. He does. These aren't traps? These, well, up oh, here, too. Here. These things, <laughs> yeah. those things those were aren't huge, traps? too. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I thought those were you're traps. You're talking to the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah, his traps are huge. <laughs> it looks like your throat. Like <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I don't know. Traps he definitely huge. looks bigger. Like, that scene when um, Ava Taylor Joy hugs him, and then he goes back from being the beast to Kevin. Like it does look like he significantly yeah, shrinks. Like, <laughs> I know there's like this trick that wrestlers will do that it's like a band that like right before a match that you can do this band and it just makes you look a little bit more buffer than you are. I don't know. I'm sure someone will talk about it. But uh, anyway, so okay, so we have Mr. Glass who is who's planning this big breakout. It's this fake surgery, right? He he you know, uh, hacks the surgery, doesn't get a surgery at all. Um, and then his big plan is to show the world who the superheroes are. Wait, wait, are. did they do the <laughs> surgery and then, um, cause they had No, it was a flashback. So he does the surgery and then he goes back into his room, right? But yeah. then when he kills that guy, mm -hmm. I just don't want to spoil for anyone who's walking around the theater, uh, he then looks at that piece and then it flashes back to what he did that night. Because they're like, we saw you leave your room last night. Yeah. You have to do this surgery. But that's when, after he already took out that piece, and then like purposely, remember he's like spinning yes, around? Yes, 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 so yes. that was all on purpose. Like that was all part of his plan. Yeah, so he so, never had the surgery. No, no, no. So why the did he have this thing? Or was that so he had the laser. I see that. He had the laser, but I don't think that, that piece is like what magnifies it and maybe no, like actually penetrates you, okay. you know? Um, so then he's like, okay, I'm gonna team up with the beast so we could tell the world that superheroes exist so that the superheroes are people who have powers are in the world can come out and, and be who they are. Uh, just because he was obsessed with comics because he, his bones broke easily. Like that's, it's a bit of a stretch, but okay. You know, I'm with you, right? We were with the Unbreakable, let's keep going. Uh, so then he teams up with the Beast, and in the process, um, both Bruce Willis's son and Sam Jackson realize, well, here and here's where I'm kind of a bit puzzled. So. Bruce Willis' son re does research on uh, James McAvoy's father, mm -hmm. who died on the same train mm -hmm. in which Bruce Willis survived, the sole survivor. That Mr. Um, Glass, that Mr. Set, Glass up. set up. Now, when Mr. Glass searches Crumb, I forget his first name, I can't remember what his first name was, but the dad. Nick? Oh, no, the dad. The dad, Crumb. Um, he looks shocked when he reads whatever he read, too. He has this moment of like, <gasps> 
and like like while he's reading the file remember he breaks and mm -hmm. reads the file but then later he says that it was all part of his plan you know but then i think he was kind of wincing at the fact that it was coincidence like he birthed two superheroes in that moment um but anyway so his big plan is to kind of show the world so there's this this tower thing that becomes like this major side of the plot of all these cameras so let's do this big show uh and then you know eventually mr glass gets uh mr dunn to break out and uh you know kicks a mane in his raincoat and i think one of the most ridiculous scenes in this movie is having uh bruce willis broaden down like a cubicle hallway in his like raincoat just shows you like how ridiculous he really looks because he looks badass the first couple times we see him in the movie and then he just kind of looks silly and then i wasn't able to take like seriously much after that and then we get the, the epic battle right we have mr glass and the mexican standoff you have you have uh, uh james mcavoy you have bruce willis and then what proceeds to follow is one of the most boring fight scenes ever <laughs> pushing a lot of pushing into a car um and so there's like once that moment happened i just checked out like i was like all right like after we had like maybe a minute of them flipping back and forth against the car i was just kind of like all right what are we doing now you know where mm -hmm. are we going and then all of a sudden the authorities show up who really have all these like, like the most creative tattoo we could come up with is a three leaf clover you know who kills who proceed these authorities proceed to kill uh, both Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis, Sam Jackson, and James McAvoy. Uh, well, I guess technically, um, what's his name killed? Mr. Glass. James McAvoy killed Sam Jackson, oh, yeah. but whatever. Uh, do with that as well. Uh, and I thought, what I did think what part was cool is like Sarah Paulson's like, touch my hand so he could see what she, who she really mm -hmm. was. I thought that part was cool, but you know, I was like, okay, you're gonna kill, you know, your, you, what you have going for this series, all right, that's fine. Um, and then it's the reveal that it was this big organization, that heroes really do exist, and comics are based off the truth, but we can't let people happen. We can't let superheroes or villains exist because- they'll run the world. Because they'll run the world, and like uh, rats, or rabbits, if you will, once one comes, many come. Like, you, do, you do they just they just populate, you know, they just keep <laughs> coming out of nowhere. So that was like their main reason for like not letting it happen and, and having these secret meetings in restaurants. And uh, so then we find that out, only for her to kind of have this uneasy feeling and to walk into a comic book store, of course, to hear uh, two nerds talk about that there's always a master plan. And that's when she finds out that she was the big the big medium for them to show off the world all these superheroes and the movie ends with the most random scene of all it has the three people that can are connected to this story i didn't understand that <laughs> why the train station <laughs> well the train station's where it's all started you know it's nostalgic and that's where you can see everyone look at their phones because everyone's on their phone at a train station if they're not on a train they're on their phone <laughs> it's <laughs> they're on the train they're on a phone too so they just that's watch fun. their glory and I guess everything, in the, I, I, I mean, I'm with you. Like, I, I, could, I could see what at least we're trying to get to. But oh, I, I, don't, the, I don't see the main, like, the idea to me communicated is that they have all joined together so they could watch all of the truly unique individuals rise up. It's kind of like what Mr. Glass was, was trying to do. Even though Mr. Glass was probably, you know, a little bit more on the evil side, you know, they just sit there and they watch and they sip on their coffee all together as friends. And they all hold hands at the end, and that's how we kind of finish glass, which feels or just finish <laughs> yeah, or start or, or start glass because uh, as uh, he pronounced, he, he makes sure to tell us this is an origin story. This isn't the story at all. Um, this is an origin story. I'm done. I don't care where the story goes after this. <laughs> I wonder. I, too bad there's no footage of M Night writing that part where he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> why you'd want to open like your major competition i guess in terms of if you're going to get in the superhero business your major competition is marvel and dc which had marvel on the magazine which marvel is in dc both appear many times in this movie you can't talk about comics without talking about the greats no that would be stupid <laughs> but if you're going to do it like at least glass and split and all them were unique they felt different right they weren't you wouldn't call them superhero movies right they have, they, obviously that's an element, but you wouldn't call Split a superhero movie. You wouldn't call, you know, this isn't a superhero movie. So, like, am I to believe now that we're just going to enter this world of more realistic superheroes and we're just going to have, like, M. Knight's big plan is to make superheroes that are more humane 
and have troubles in their marriages. <laughs> like, is that the route we want to go? Is like that where we're going to kind of, you know, the ones who, you know, have mom issues and we're abused? Like, is that, is that the, the story that everyone wants to hear? Like, I don't know. I honestly would have liked, I told you in the movie, like the big twist that M. Night should have done. Even though we talked about a lot of cool twists last week. If you haven't seen our reviews for... Um, replicas and the upside we talked about really cool twists like bringing back Sixth Sense characters or like you know having the aliens involved really just would have been like at the very end of the movie Sarah Paulson's like writing all these things and she's like yeah they were just crazy we, they got the surgery they're completely yeah. fine now. I think that would have been <laughs> that, that, that would have, been that would have at slap. least been like oh okay <laughs> at least would have been like something you didn't see coming because you knew they weren't gonna go that route why, why go the crazy route um, but yeah I mean I could you know just a lot of questions. I don't understand where he was trying to go, what he's trying to do. Uh, I didn't feel anything for this movie, uh, and I think you're better off just watching Split and Unbreakable and kind of forgetting this one exists. <laughs> I think he'll make a lot of money, though. I'm sure he yeah, will. I think he'll make a lot of money. He will make a lot of money. And this will continue the... But the thing is, like, obviously, the one thing we've seen is that successful Shyamalan is not good Shyamalan. Shyamalan's got to be up against the wall to make a good movie. And I hate to say that because that sucks. And that, like, it's unfortunate that this one dude who wanted to, to tell stories the next is like Spielberg. in that position. Yeah, so we found out that this was told. Give this credit to Dallas. Dallas found out that Newsweek <laughs> said that, and that was way back when he started. So I thought you were saying that someone called him Steven Spielberg today, and I'm like, hmm, you know. But I, I get it, right? Like, the dude made Sixth Sense, like, one of the most culturally impactful movies. People still talk about people that. People still talk about that. People still quote it. It's still, I like, a relevant. Like, here's the thing. There's this great, um, in, there's film Twitter. I don't know if any of you guys, like, really follow film Twitter, but there's, like, this huge film community on Twitter. And people talk about, like, while Avatar is the most, like, highest grossing film of all time, the movie, like, has made no cultural footprint. Like, no one references on us. And, like, it's not a movie you quote or talk about, you know. Sixth Sense has managed, you know, 20 some odd years of still being somewhat, and that's like, why he's still as the movie that brought movies. the twist. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's not easy to do. No. But it's also really hard when you make your best movie first. And I'm sure a lot of people would argue that he made his best movie first. Even though Sixth Sense wasn't like his very first movie, I don't think. Um, but it was like the one that introduced him to the world. Uh, yeah, glasses, glasses rough. Or sharp. But sharp would give it the opposite meaning, so that pun doesn't work. Yeah. It was broken. Wow. Amazing. The glass I, I, don't, was, I can't add The glass was that. broken. It was shattered. And I, I didn't... And never mind. Okay. That's just gonna... I didn't get the whole part. Like, he kept breaking the frame, so he had the right piece of glass. He like, just, he, he just, just couldn't... You, right he, couldn't find, he couldn't find another piece of sharp glass that would cut his throat. You had to wait for, like, one particular one. You know what I'm talking about? When he killed that dude, yeah. he was like, oh, I had to wait for the right piece of glass. Like, really? Did you? That scene reminded <laughs> like me of... Like, he broke uh, out. And, like, you had access to everything. Did you really need to wait for a piece of glass? <laughs> Like, all right. glass. Yeah, that, but I did like that. Like, I at least like he had a signature, you know? He killed him with a piece of glass, but it's the only thing we got. That part remind me of Gone Girl, when, uh, that oh, baby yeah. and Patrick Harris, I was like, whoa. That scene was pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, it, it Well, not, not, not in Gone Girl, but, like, that scene was pretty cool. Yeah. He was like, Psh, you know, got him. But then, like, that's it. He just breaks more bones. Like, he is so cool, and, so, like, I love that character. And I love the idea that he is, like, the, you know, the Lex Luthor of this world. But they don't ever really, you know, they don't do nothing with them. They make them feel weak. Sarah Paulson were for inner game. Yeah. <laughs> the damage control. This is damage control. I just want to see how Sarah Paulson like. I just want to see like how you get a job at this place. Like that's, if I want an origin story, I want the damage control origin story. Like, you know, back, so they said, they were talking, they kind of threw out like 1920s era is like the beginning of like these comics and what we're supposedly supposed to take as real life evidence that was turned into fiction. So like I want to go back to the 20s and like see like the first damage control group and like see who they were killing back in the day. Like that's not, you get me there. I'll come see that. But you know, what we're gonna get is what I don't want to see. Love it all. Yeah. Next week, we have a movie that I was so excited for that was supposed to come out last year, October. Yes, Matt And I was so jacked up. Anne Hathaway, Murder on a Boat Thriller. Murder on a Boat Thriller. I, that should have been the title. I want to see. Serenity, right? Yeah. Serenity. Finally coming out. Yeah. Next week here at AMC 10 Square, where you should be, because you should hang out with us. Because if you think this is fun, you should watch the movie with us. Even better. 10 o'clock, Town Square. Private theater. No people snoring. No people talking. You have a great, great time uh, here at our private theaters at AMC Town Square. Make sure to text this guy if you want tickets at 702-345-618. Or comment down below if you ever want to join us. Um, 
Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> Next week, chasingsimba.com's own ads. The Film Lovers website. Is killing these people who have superhuman powers in escape rooms. The very ending of Escape Room has like the masked crazy guy, right? Like the guy we never see. It's actually Sarah Paulson because they're killing people who have superpowers and super intelligence. <gasps> now that's a twist for you, M. Night. Say goodnight. Um, promo? Serenity. Okay. Okay.